Hello everyone and welcome back to another Boruto 2 Blue Vortex chapter coverage video. Now today we're going to be talking about the full chapter release of Boruto 2 Blue Vortex chapter 12. Let's get right into it but before we do I would like to ask if you could leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and hit that noti bell as well, that would mean the world to me. Thank you so much and let's get right on with the video. Starting with Boruto saving Sarada and coming in to try and fight Hidari. We move forward with Konohamaru being assigned to take care of Himawari. Konohamaru is really, really annoying in this chapter and I'll talk about that a little bit later but Konohamaru is so much weaker than the rest of his team and bear in mind they're all a lot younger than him and a lot less experienced than Konohamaru at this point. But the way that he acts around Boruto right now, obviously not having the full knowledge of who Boruto really is, but I still just find it really annoying and like, give Boruto his respect man, he's 10 times stronger than you. But as we move on, um, Boruto essentially says that he has to take in the chakra through both feet, um, wait, wait then out. But as we move on, we get more shots from Boruto versus Hidari. Boruto wields his sword to block Hidari's kind of wood arm and uses Futon Topa, which is one style breakthrough, which is a jutsu that Orochimaru and Mitsuki know. And as far as we know, that they are the only two people that know this jutsu in the entire universe. So, incredibly powerful and a really big feat for Boruto. He uses that to fly uh, Hidari in the other direction, put it that way. And also, I think this does confirm that Boruto is currently working with Orochimaru alongside Kashin Koji, which is something that I've personally been saying for a very long time. As we move through the chapter, Hidari flies into the claw mark, which I did not know um, came this early. It kind of gives them a chance to regroup, and it shows a shot of Kawaki and Delta where they're going to start to fly over. Boruto's presence moved locations in a split second. It must be space, time, then jutsu. Right now, he's probably in the spot where Team 10's encounter started, which is exactly correct. They see Jura, right? And they are in the air, flying. Delta and Kawaki just flying casually. It's just a normal thing in Boruto these days. And Jura is on the floor, right? <laughs> they're talking and, you know, devising a plan and all that sort of thing. They're talking about the sensory stuff. Um, and Jura just doesn't pay any mind whatsoever to Kawaki and Delta. They are literally like, look, Kawaki says that bastard standing there all smug. What's he planning? Jura doesn't even recognize that Kawaki and Delta are even there. It is hilarious. Kawaki is a walking L right now in this time skip. And it is quite funny to witness. Konohamaru says, like I said, he's being really annoying in this chapter. What are you thinking, Boruto? Going in and out of Konoha all nonchalant. Don't you understand your position here? And Sarah does like, shut up, mate. Do you understand that Boruto's saving our arses right now? If Boruto wasn't here, the entire village would be fucked, is basically what Sarah does saying. Konohamaru says, be careful. It seems like Code can manipulate the claw grimes to do his bidding. We have no idea where they're going to pop up. Mate, you know nothing. Boruto is the one that is informed here. Boruto is the one that is going to carry you through this fight. Stop being an idiot. <laughs> like, it's so annoying. Anyway, I need to stop ranting about Konohamaru. I actually like Konohamaru as a character, but like, God, he's annoying. Like, you don't know shit, mate. Just shut up. Anyway, um, this guy says, hey, you're from the sensory... Oh, sorry, Boruto says, you're from the sensory unit, right? Focus on sensing the claw grounds in the area. Don't let even the slightest trace of chakra slip past you. And this guy, again, is like, how dare you? You're not in this village. You're a traitor. Fuck you. Shut up! Honestly, uh, my boy Boruto, leave him alone. The only two people that know and care about Boruto and, like, understand his position are Sumire and Sarada. And Sumire says... This guy's targeting Sarada, so essentially just we need to defend Sarada all times. And Sarada brings up the fact that the 
uh, Sa Hidari having Sasuke's powers and essentially moving and kind of, well, he looks like him as well. Sara does like, it has a connection to Papa becoming a tree, doesn't it? Which is, of course, exactly the case, yes. The reason that Sasuke is a tree is, well, because Hidari exists, essentially, and she is devising that right now, which is good. It's nice that it's quite early in the story and she's already figuring this out. Konohamaru is like, becoming a tree, hold a second, by trees do you mean the same thing that Moegi was turned into? Yes, exactly that. So we're starting to learn more about the Shinju, not just Boruto, but the entire cast is starting to understand what these things truly are. Boruto says that this guy was formed on the basis of Sasuke's chakra. Don't, don't pay too much attention to that, there's no need to hold back, because it isn't actually Sasuke, exactly. All we've got to do is focus on taking him down in order to save Master, or Uncle Sasuke, like Boruto likes to call him. Um, so yeah, don't know how Boruto knows this, we will find this out soon, but Boruto knows that we cannot just simply uh, keep Hidari alive and maybe Sasuke returns or whatever. Hidari needs to be brought down in order for Sasuke to come back. It's not like when Hidari dies, Sasuke dies. It is not like that at all. Konohamaru is like, where did you get this information from? What are you talking about in that? Again, he's just being really annoying. Um, and Boruto's rightly like, shut the fuck up, Konohamaru. Just focus, please. Um, like, Jesus Christ, he's being overbearing. But the sensory guy says, it's a claw grind, but where about? I'm not sure, somewhere over there. Because there is, to be fair, quite a few claw grounds on the floor. Hidari begins to emerge, and, well, not just Hidari, sorry. It's before Hidari, a million claw grounds emerge. And Boruto's like, right, I'm time for me to fucking massacre them. Sarada is also gonna, uh, gonna help. However, uh, Sarada needs to focus on the fact that Hidari is going to target her. Boruto proceeds to, like I say, slice down billions of them, Sarada helps as well, and then Hidari pops out and grabs Sarada's foot, tries to wrap her up in this kind of wood arm looking weird thing as he passes through a claw mark, a claw grime, um, and as this happens, Boruto gets Hidari's back, pops up with a Rasen gun, pops it right in his back and blows up. Hidari's body essentially. He gets left in a terrible position, he's in extremely hurt and he retreats rightfully. So, uh, of course Sarada is rightly saying that Hidari is going to recover in this situation but what uh, Sarada doesn't know is that Boruto is going to use this as a good thing because Boruto needs to charge up his current ultimate attack, the Rastengan Uzuhiko and that's where this is where we start to almost get a little bit of exposition about the Uzuhiko. However, before that, Hidari shows that he can instantly regenerate, probably because he has Bijou Tra or sorry, Jubi Chakra, and that is obviously incredibly powerful and has a lot of healing factor within it. So yeah, this is again there's so right, this is what I wanted to ask. So we see a shot of Hidari's Renegan, right? And it almost looks as if these are like activation symbols, right? Like there's like a uh, a Rinnegan activation and then the next shot we get there's a billion claw marks on the floor. So is this Hidari's ultimate Rinnegan ability? If it is, is this not a bit weak? Like I get it makes him unpredictable but like Jura has a fucking Bijou Dama in his eye that he uses as a literal laser that travels probably past the speed of light um, and instantly punctured Boruto near his vital or maybe even in one of his vital spots. Um, yeah, and Sarada obviously got hit in the same chapter as well. So, I, I just feel like Hidari might be the weakest Shinju. We've not seen Matsuri, we've not seen Bug yet, and there might be others to come in the future as well. But, Hidari is not impressing me right now. And Boruto says, I'll use Uzuhiko. At maximum output, I'll finish him in one blow. Sarada's like, huh? Um, and Boruto continues. He says, it uses the rotation and revolution of the planet along with the power of centrifugal force. It's a new Rasengan that I call the Chakra of the Planet. Can you take him down without running off to his claw marks in one hit? It shouldn't be a problem, as long as I do it without holding back. At any rate, the power of Uzuhiko is limitless. Now this is huge, and I'm going to make another video on this topic as a whole, because this is by far the most significant part of this chapter. It is huge 
and um, a defining moment in Boruto 2 Blue Vortex in terms of kind of coming to terms with Boruto's power level. Boruto might actually have limitless power. Boruto's power might be coming from Shibai and that might be the kind of, um, how to say it, like the thread that allows the Jogan to awaken in the future because his ability to use Uzuhiko might come from the fact that he has a little bit of Shibai's chakra within him. We will talk about that at length in another video, but yeah, we need to crack on with the rest of the chapter, so let's get on with that. Boruto says that he has to take in the planet's chakra using both feet, which means that he can't fly right now. And if he's going to take him down in one hit, he needs that much more chakra. So his plan right now is essentially to buy time whilst he charges up Uzuhiko so that when Hidari is open for an attack, he can use Uzuhiko and blow him to pieces. Konohamaru is now on the helpful side, which is hilarious. Like, Bro just realises, like, oh, Boruto's a different level. Um, but yeah, the fighting continues as uh, Konohamaru use and uses Rasen Barricade, which seems to be his new variation of the Rasengan, which is cool that he's got an original jutsu, I like that. Um, but he does also end up in a little bit of a pinch because, again, Hidari is just too unpredictable and too strong. And he says to Konohamaru Boruto that watching over Himawari should have been his role all along and Konohamaru says that he decides what he wants to prioritise. If he has time to complain, then complete your jutsu already, Kore. <laughs> I love reading the fan transitions because Viz Media doesn't include all these, uh, like, the vocal um, ticks and all that sort of stuff. Like, I love that stuff. <laughs> Kore, like, that is such a classic for Konohamaru back for Naruto. But, yeah, as we continue, um, Hidari gets Sarada in a really, really dodgy situation and Boruto reacts instantly. Sarada uses Chidori Stream to break herself out of Hidari's claw and stuns Hidari in the process, kicking him upwards so that Boruto can eventually use Rasengan Uzuhiko. It's not fully charged, but he knows that now is the time. It is now or never. Jumps up, activates Rasengan Uzuhiko on Hidari and literally blows him to smithereens. Look at the effect of Rasengan Uzuhiko. This ability, and this isn't even its full power by the way, this ability is truly busted. I can't believe how strong it is and I can't wait to talk about it in depth in another video in the next week or so. Um, but, this is where I get annoyed a little bit again, because Kawaki, being the idiot that he is, after Boruto has blown Hidari apart, he has literally, he has only his upper and only has one arm as well. Um, and Kawaki comes in. And Kawaki steals the kill. Look at Hidari. Kawaki comes in, uses his ability to have the final blow. I'll put you out your misery and blows him completely up. And as far as we're concerned, Hidari in this moment is completely dead. However... He spawns something that might just turn into one of the biggest plot threads in this entire story. And that is the th the soul thorn. And that is exactly what we're seeing right now. It looks like a chakra fruit. It looks like a devil fruit from One Piece. Um, and this thing is mysterious to say the least. Boruto has it in his hand. And we're known straight away that Boruto has more information than we do. A lot more information than we do. Boruto says, what do you think? Is this the right thing? Kashin Koji says, object confirmed, there's no mistake in it. It's the same as what I saw, the soul thorn. So, I, I'm going to take it in the way that the soul thorn is essentially active in every single Shinju. And once you kill a Shinju, their soul thorn appears and you have to do something with that soul thorn in order to essentially free the people who were turned into trees, so to speak. And Kawaki is like, what is this thing? He's obviously expecting that uh, Boruto knows everything. It mostly is Kashin Koji that has this information, but I'm so interested to know why, number one, Kashin Koji knows about it, and number two, why Boruto had the idea that the Soul Thorn exists. Obviously, that probably happened through Kashin Koji, but mainly, what did Kashin Koji have to essentially confront to then have... Uh, the knowledge of the soul thorn. I'm like, I have no idea. 
Did he fight a Shinju that we don't know about? Did he already fight Matsuri or Bug off screen? Uh, who knows? Like we literally have no idea, but that's the beauty of it. We wait till next month and then hopefully we will get some answers. Kawaki's arguing with Boruto as he constantly does, but before they can finish their argument, Boruto is struck. Just like I said, Boruto, the obviously holder of the current Soul Thorn right now, he uh, is struck through potentially a vital point. And who is he struck by? Well, of course, it would be Jura. Jura snipes Boruto from ages away, like so far away. You can see there's like no land where Jura is. It's ridiculous. Um, there's no forest or anything at all. Like he could be thousands of bloody meters away. That is insane. Um, and he charges it up once again. Sara does like, oh wait, this is the, the key to uh, saving Sasuke, so I need to go and retrieve it. As she goes to pick up the soul thorn, her arm is sniped as well. Both of them have been hit by a laser bijou dama and therefore are in serious trouble. Boruto is spitting blood from his mouth and Sara does arm has been completely busted. They're in a terrible position. Kawaki is like, what the fucking hell? And the soul thorn flies away from them with apparently movement of its own and flies straight to Jura. We know that this is so important for the uh, for the future of the series because now we're going to have to take down Jura for more than one reason. Jura wants to eat Naruto or Himawari or whatever it may be. He wants that chakra um, and also needs to eat an Otsusuke in order to bear a god tree which is exactly what their goal, their essentially life purpose is. But we also need to free the soul thorn of uh, Hidari to then free Sasuke. So this is incredibly important and I'm really, really intrigued to see how this plot point develops in the future. And the final page says, well then, Kawaki alone is more more than enough to serve as food for the Tentails. Otsusuke Boruto, I've decided to kill you. Now why would he want to kill Boruto? Because of this. He knows about the soul thorns, did he? That makes him more of a threat, threat than I previously assumed. We don't know the truth behind the soul thorn. We know nothing about it, essentially. We know kind of the basics. We can put the pieces together that it's important in terms of, you know, like, freeing Sasuke and all that sort of stuff. But we don't know what this thing actually is and what the importance of it is to Jura and all that. So this is so incredibly important, so intriguing, and I can't wait to see how Kishimoto follows this up next month in Boruto 2 Blue Vortex chapter 13. Tell me what you think about the chapter down in the comments below. I would love to hear it. Um, I'm going to leave a couple of Boruto and Naruto videos on the screen right now if you would like to continue watching. I would appreciate that a lot. Um, I'm going to ask if you could also leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more content from myself. Boruto, Naruto, One Piece... Jujutsu Kaisen, Chainsaw Man, anything you want in the kind of shonen manga realm right now, you can see whatever you want. There is something for absolutely everybody. So if you want to subscribe, I would appreciate that a lot. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.